trust, when it's shared based upon mutual understandings and agreements and values and intentions, is a beautiful thing. And, and that said, in our current tumultuous environment and social process and conflicted, confused, and divisive and competitive and, and fear-ridden environment, it is not, not an optimal mode of uh, moving forward. And, and we're going to delineate just a minor difference between trust and what might be termed faith. If we're operating in surrender to spirit and in accord with spirit in faith, then and, and following our guidance and intuition, we're generally okay. It doesn't mean life will be perfect. It doesn't mean that there won't be issues or problems or pain or suffering. And it doesn't mean that things will be the way we want them to be. It, they might well be just the opposite of the way our ego, our emotional dynamics, or assumptions or expectations might say they should be. So is that if we are if we're moving from faith and surrender to spirit, and we get lemons, is it useful to gracefully make lemonade? Trust is a very different thing. It's a, it is a thing of emotion. It is, is a thing of personal emotion that often has blended in with it a lot of other relational dynamics, conditioned in role dynamics, right, wrong, good, bad, safe, unsafe, true, false, better than, less than, special, or, 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 or irrelevant. And, and, and so, and just so we've said it, we recognize you, Sammy, have a very pure heart and a very pure intention in your love and caring and kindness, as, as do the other folks online here. And that is a beautiful, wonderful thing. <clears throat> so the paradox is what happens when, when loving, kind, caring, unconditional love, not unconditional trust, Unconditional love meets unconsciousness, dysfunction, ego process, karmas, simulacra, tribal process, unhealed wounds, and dysfunctionally uh, conditioned relational dynamics. So that, that unconditional love doesn't, it, it doesn't, need to be unconditionally trusting. And, and that's a, an important nuance. Can uh, If someone swims with sharks underwater, there are people who do swim with sharks every day and they're not dead. They're not, and, and it's, and, and the reason they're not dead is because they understand the shark. And by the way, they may love sharks. Isn't that amazing? They don't have any judgment of them. Sometimes they may feed them. They may pet them as they swim by. And they don't put their arms in the shark's mouth. Because they understand the shark. The shark is a, an expression of God. Every, every sentient being is. So conscious discernment allows us not, not to be blindly trusting or loving, nor, nor blind in our faith. There, there's a just hearkening back to a Bible story. We, if we're and we're paraphrasing, we apologize. If we get any detail of it wrong. Uh, Christ sent his disciples into a town that was known to be corrupt, and they said, "How do we go in there? How do we go in there with this vulnerability, this open-hearted vulnerability, and and not get uh, hurt or?" They're damaged in the process. And how do we meet these corrupt people? He said, be as wise as serpents and as harmless as doves. Is there wisdom, so much wisdom in that? So being very discerning in every moment and saying, I may, I may absolutely 
absolutely unconditionally love whoever I'm in relationship with in every moment. It doesn't mean I'm turning a blind eye to any dynamic of their system. It doesn't mean I'm going to allow myself to be walked on or betrayed or abused or mistreated or disrespected or invalidated or devalued or any other uh, dynamic that is painful. <clears throat> And it does, it does mean I have a, uh, an intention to forgive over and over and over and over again, and also to have boundaries, to say, this is acceptable and this is not. Uh, this is tolerable and that is not. I don't, I don't set those boundaries out of rage, judgment, desire to control you, call you bad, claim victimhood, or claim you're a perpetrator, I set them simply because they're the boundaries I consciously choose. I can, I, in my current moment of consciousness, I can relate to you, I can love you, I can care about you to this degree in these ways, and with these boundaries, and based on these shared values or, or protocols or uh, tendencies, and outside of that, we will argue. We will. I will stand up for myself, and or I'll walk away. I, I will be heard, and respected, and understood, and we'll negotiate our way through it. Not saying I'm right and you're wrong, or I'm good and you're bad, or that I'm a victim and you're a perpetrator. Simply saying we disagree. How do we get to agreement? How do we get to something we can both live with? and then do that over and over and over again for the next 30, 40, 50 years. <laughs>